In this video, I'm going to attempt to run a television and various other electronic devices directly connected to 9 volt batteries, a whole string of 9 volt batteries connected in series. It should be an interesting experiment. See if it turns on. Oh, it's on! Completely running on 9 volt batteries. Oh my god, it works. So this TV works perfectly on DC. No AC required. This is plugged straight into the TV and I can demonstrate if I were to unplug this now, the TV should just turn off. Purely on 9 volt batteries plugged in. Running a TV on 9 volt batteries. I wonder if that's a first. I started by clicking the positive and negatives together and that way I can create a battery pack with uh, quite a spicy voltage so be careful do not touch the two end terminals of your completed battery pack the battery pack voltage ended up being about 213 volt DC so I was careful not to touch both ends of this battery pack at the same time I really don't like electric shocks I took a 9 volt battery clip cut it in half, attach some wires to it and attach the other end to a, a mains socket outlet. The battery polarity really isn't important since all these appliances were intended for AC use so you can easily swap the polarity around. I left the earth unconnected since this was only an experiment. So there you go, Netflix running on 9 volt batteries. So you could really run quite a few appliances directly. What you drinking? I'll just pause that. Run. You could run quite a few appliances directly um, off of DC. So you could have a stack of uh, lead acid batteries being charged with solar panels. And a lot of appliances won't need an inverter. They can run directly. In actual fact, this voltage is far below what it should run at because the equivalent DC voltage of 230 volts would be 315, 330 volts. And we're only doing a DC voltage of um, about 210, which would be similar to um, America's 120 volts rectified to DC. So um, modern appliances, because they have to work in different parts of the world, can work on a wide variety of voltages. So you don't even have to be that worried about getting your battery pack voltage spot on. It doesn't need much regulation. A lot of the LED bulbs I've tested, I've tested with a wide variety of voltages and the brightness stays the same. It regulates, compensates for it inside. So for a, a very simple off-grid solution, I think a, a battery bank simply charged with, with a very simple charge controller of a whole bunch of uh, batteries connected in series to give you approximately um, 250 volts um, all the way up to uh, 300 volts um, and some carefully chosen appliances you don't need a, an inverter at all um, you only need it for traditional transformers and uh, some types of motors like induction motors but uh, a lot of um, uh, other 240 volt motors will run on, on DC just fine there are some issues with DC as well like switching it on and off um, some switches aren't rated for DC so you'd have to modify a few things, but in theory, you don't need an inverter. You can do a rudimentary off-grid um, house with all DC lighting. The appliances can run directly off of DC, and I think that's pretty, pretty incredible. It should be more reliable as well, because um, uh, the inverter is another point of failure and another point of inefficiency. Uh, you lose some of your energy just converting it into AC. So why not run everything directly off of DC if you can? I believe some um, fridges uh, are now inverter driven, which means they run on DC on the inside anyway. So maybe they could be made to work without an inverter. Anyway, I thought it was a truly interesting experiment to see if you could run a television just off of nine volt batteries. That's pretty incredible. They're getting slightly warm now because I think I'm running them quite hard. It's not really designed to do this. 
And to prove that the TV is running off of these batteries, I will unplug it while it's plugged in. So this is the positive and negative going straight to the pins of the, the plug. My name is if I unplug it now, you just cut I'm the power to the TV cool. and it turns off. This is all that's powering it. A bunch of cheap 9 volt batteries connected in series. So we know that, uh, that the TV works off of our stack of 9 volt batteries. But I thought it would be interesting to try a phone charger. So I've got this um, iPhone charger plugged into an Android phone. And uh, uh, I wanted to try that to see how well that would actually run um, directly off of DC. So let's give that a try. And it seems to charge just fine. That's a good result, I would say. I also wanted to confirm that various phone chargers would work. So here's an example of another um, phone charger. And um, it seems to work fine as well. A cordless drill battery. So the vault charger so we'll stick the battery in there see what happens if we plug it into the 9 volt batteries it's charging what do you know take the battery off it's charging so why does this work well in the past this would not have been possible. In the past, a lot of our appliances would be powered by transformers. Now, transformers require AC to operate. They cannot operate on DC. But they have been replaced by switch mode power supplies, which one of the things that they do is they take the AC transformer into DC. They pass through a bridge rectifier. This also means that if you put DC onto the mains terminals, it passes straight through the bridge re rectifier anyway. And inside it operates on DC anyway. So putting AC on it will just pass straight through and be DC inside. So I think for a small off-grid system, like a log cabin for instance, it's unnecessary to use an inverter. Since the devices run on DC anyway, why should you make AC just to convert it back into DC again? Uh, the inverter has its own um, energy losses in the conversion, so you can skip that step. Marvelous. Right, so the batteries are pretty drained, but uh, I'm still going to try to see if this uh, Dell charger can be powered directly by this stack of DC 9 volt batteries connected in series. Um, it started off about um, 211 volts and it's dropped down to about um, 120 volts. But uh, let's see what happens if, uh, if we plug the charger in. Oh, look, the charger light has come on and it's showing charging there. So it's actually working just fine. And uh, if I unplug it, it stops charging the laptop. Let's check the actual voltage drop. So let's see what the actual voltage is showing. Hundred and sixty volts, hundred and sixty nine, about hundred and seventy volts, more or less. So uh, yeah, so these. These little switch mode power supplies, they, they seem to be very lenient to, about the input voltage. In actual fact, let's have a look, let's see what the label says. 100 volts AC to 240 volts. So it's already a bit below what it should be, but it's, it's more or less in spec at the moment. Um, bear in mind that's an AC rating. And uh, the RMS voltage 
is an AC, so you, the peak voltage is what we need to look at, what the peak voltage of RMS would be. Um, so this would be more or less like uh, what the peak voltage of American or Japanese voltage would be. But uh, yeah, so these, these modern power supplies, they're very flexible. They can handle a wide variety of voltages, so you don't have to keep the voltage exactly stable. It means that the, uh, the battery pack will work just fine when it's nearly empty and fully charged. You don't need to regulate the voltage. Let's try the TV again, this time playing YouTube. 100 and 120 volts, 100, 128 volts. That's pretty amazing. Okay, so that just proves that uh, that it works. If I um, if I unplug it today, it should turn off. It's only running on these nine volt batteries. Please subscribe to my channel so you can see more of my videos. Thank you.